I'm here with Karen Tyson, who's uh, running in the Republican primary for the second district Congress, and I'd like to get right to the questioning, if you don't mind. Uh, in some of your recent tweets, uh, I've seen the hashtag MAGA. I, I believe that's Make America Great Again. So a lot of people, when they see that, both pro and con, do ask, is America not great now? So is America great now, or what exactly does that mean? We're getting there. America has a lot of great people, a lot of great aspects, but we are not the number one nation that we should be. But we are moving in that direction. Thank you to President Trump. And yes. Uh, recently, uh, there was a, a Trump tweet, as they're known, in which uh, the tweet was that the, the press is, quote, the enemy of the people, um, quote, unquote. Do you agree that the, the press and the media is literally the enemy of the American people? That's a pretty harsh statement, especially really coming from rural Kansas. I think that we do have some, some good media. I know I've got some great newspapers in my Senate district. They try and work very hard to be accurate, and I appreciate that. I brought along with me some mailers. They're from 2010, and they're from the current Congresswoman, Lynn Jenkins. And in these mailers, she's talking about spending, uh, the deficit, the debt. And these are from 2010. I've been asking all the candidates about this. You know, this has been going on for quite a while. The debt is now $21 uh, trillion. Uh, dollars. Uh, so is it natural that some second district voters may be a little cynical about, about any candidate who says they're going to do something about the debt, given how long it's been going on? Uh, in the United States. It is natural and it is difficult. I mean, you're going to be one of 435 representatives up there. But I tell people we're moving a mountain, one rock at a time. Sometimes we get pebbles and other times we get boulders. And we're going to keep fighting the fight. You know, we need to take action and get results. And that's what I'm about. I think if each legislator chips in and researches, we can all find places that we can save money or cut wasteful spending. And that's what I'm about as a legislator. One of the, one of the problems in tackling uh, the debt is that discretionary spending is only 34% of all federal spending. Of discretionary spending, defense is 55% of that, not leaving a huge area that, in which it's actually possible to cut. Are there any specific areas that you'd like to see the federal budget cut, any programs or departments that, that you think could be cut? No, I think we need to do an analysis of duplication of effort. I, I know that there's programs out there that are doing more than one thing or could be ran, run more efficiently. We absolutely need to take a look at that. Other, also, I've mentioned before, fraud and abuse. We, we pay a lot, billions of dollars out in fraud and abuse on income tax uh, returns and other items, we could address that. My IT background, technology, we could use technology to help cut the fraud and the abuse and save the taxpayers virtually billions of dollars. Uh, the second district is an interesting district. We'll talk more about it a little bit later, but there's a lot of farmers. And you've been attending forums and Right now, there's a fear among some farmers that a possible trade war could hurt them. Soybeans are huge in the second district. So when farmers approach you and say they're apprehensive, how do you answer that? What's your response to that, the possibility of a trade war? It, it is a mixed bag right now, but the majority of farmers that I'm hearing from realize that we have not had fair trade for a while and that this president is trying to get us fair trade. What happens, uh, and this is a trade-off for all elected officials in some sense, what happens if, you know, there's a, a trade back and forth that helps uh, the steel workers of Michigan but hurts the soybean farmers of, of, of uh, Second District? Uh, are you willing to go to bat, you know, for, the, for those uh, who might be hurt in the Second District, even if overall it might help? the trade imbalance? My job is to represent the second district and that has to be a priority. Obviously we don't want to make any decisions that is to the detriment of the rest of the country, but my priority will be to the second district and my constituents. 
I don't want to reveal my age, but I have started to receive mailers from the AARP, which is a retired <laughs> persons association. And uh, they send out some uh, brochures and others, and they say, ask candidates, you know, if they're concerned about Social Security and Medicare. So uh, to that point, do you have any ideas, or what are your ideas that down the road Social Security uh, and Medicare will be there for senior uh, Americans. They have signed up and paid into those programs, so we do need to protect the services that have been agreed to, but the programs need to be revisited, um, much like programs at the state level. They were set up in an era where decisions were made and factors have changed, so we need to take a look at those factors. The Social Security will run out of money technically, uh, possibly when you're, if you were elected, if you're in Congress. And there seems to be two approaches to it. One is technically to raise taxes uh, on people, meaning taking more money out of their paychecks to pay for Social Security. The other option would be to reduce benefits, make them wait longer to receive Social Security. Uh, do you see, w which would you favor, either of those, a mixture, because doing nothing is probably not a possibility. Yeah, I'll have to look at the data and there will be actuarial data that we can use to make the best decision for our country. Okay. Uh, here's a statistic that uh, when I found it I was quite shocked by. Since the year 2000 there have been 183,000 deaths due to forms of opioid overdoses, mm -hmm. which is it's just quite something. Tragic. Amazing, yeah. So this is, but still it's a relatively new um, problem. Why do you think it's it's popped up as a big problem, and is what do you think Congress or a Congressperson could do about it to, to stem some of this tragedy? Well, we can support law enforcement um, with funding for law enforcement for the illegal drugs that are coming into the country. A lot of it is illegal. Um, we also can address the prescriptions that are being handed out. Government should not be between you and your doctor, but we do have an epidemic of deaths. Um, you can talk to almost anyone, and if they haven't been immediately impacted, they know somebody that's been impacted by it. So it is a, an epidemic that needs to be addressed. The interesting thing is there's some people that believe uh, marijuana should be legalized and they say very few people die of marijuana overdoses. And yet, as you mentioned, some of these o overdoses are legal prescription drugs. Uh, what's your opinion of the possibility of, of marijuana being legalized, at least at the federal level? It, I think we need to put more issues down to the state. The state should be deciding some of these issues. Our, our federal government was not set up to handle most of the issues that they're taking on these days. So we're supposed to be sovereign states. And, and yet, technically, marijuana is illegal at the federal level. It is. And a number of states, as you know, have legalized, and we have this odd situation where states are legalizing something that federally is illegal, really bringing about a conflict between the federal government and the state governments. We have a lot of breakdowns with um, federal government choosing what laws to enforce and not to enforce. We have that going on with illegal immigration also. We need consistency. If the laws exist, we need to abide by the laws. Uh, this is the final question. I think it's actually quite interesting. The second district is fascinating to me because uh, the second district voters voted for Donald Trump quite overwhelmingly in 2016, and in 2014, the second district voters voted for Paul Davis, a Democrat against Sam Brownback. So to me that's a very interesting district. What's your view on, on a distri this district which does seem potentially capable of voting Democratic and why do you think you're the best fit for the Republican Party but also for the district overall? I think the second district is very good at looking at the candidates themselves, not necessarily party line always, and I'm excited about that. I am a strong candidate for this district for several reasons. I know the district. I'm fifth generation Kansan, software engineer by trade, agriculture background, raised in a small agribusiness. My husband and I own and operate Tyson Ranch, you know, in a small rural community. 
we we know Kansas you know this state is so critical to my life um, we could live anywhere in the world and we choose to be here and I'm proud of it and what makes me a strong representative for the district is that I will fight for my constituents constituent services are one of the biggest issues that I do now as a legislator and I will continue that effort in DC all right that's all the time we have a reminder for everyone to vote on August 7th and thank you so much for joining us thank you very much yeah appreciate it